Caller ID, call forwarding, call waiting, and call blocking. <laughs> I think it's time you cut the blue wire. Cut the blue wire. Save up to $250 on your phone features with RevVoice. Get RevVoice. Save money. Fort Charlotte MP Dr. Andre Rollins under fire for his criticism of the opposition leader. This after the FNM leader defended his actions during a heated exchange in Parliament last night. Government investigating a European terrorist possible link to the Bahamas. Plus two men charged with possessing more than 500 pounds of marijuana. We've got those stories and a lot more coming up tonight. I'm Dana Smith and MB12 starts right now. Tough news tonight, the opposition leader's story concerning his meeting with a reported gang member is comical, according to Fort Charlotte MP Dr. Andre Rollins, who criticized his party leader for Menace's, quote, unwise meeting with one of the men who claims they were paid money as part of an alleged murder plot. Well, the PLP today took note of Rollins's comments in the House of Assembly with Cabinet Minister and Member of Parliament for Golden Gates, Shane Gibson, ridiculing and mocking the FNM for what he called is Rollins' familiar lack of respect for leadership. The headline says, Menace Story Comical. You can imagine me. Yeah. Man, man, is this Schwarz Allen? Yeah. Is this a man who took him in his bosom? Yeah. And as he started to wiggle, he said, you're comical, you're comical. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, back here. Remember, can you can continue? This is him. Can you him. continue? This is Vigo. Remember, before Charlie take it. I speaker. had nothing to do with this. All I did is I just fold the paper up and I said, Minister Kamal. He said, There's nothing that Dr. Minister can say that's going to remove the sense of embarrassment that surrounds his answer. He talking about his leader. He talking about his leader. This last point about it being comical. They can't stop laughing, Mr. Speaker. So obviously, Members, something it, they find something funny. I was asked the question if I believe my leader is believable, and I did not. I did not say that I did not believe my leader. I said I expected my leader is being truthful about everything that he has said. I said, however, when I listened to. Uh, what was said, I find it comical. That is an honest answer. And I stand by it. Rollins and Gibson faced off in the House of Assembly this morning after the latter derided Rollins and Gibson faced off in the House of Assembly this morning after the latter derided what he said was Rollins' lack of respect for menace. This after Rollins, as a telephone guest on Star FM radio talk show Jeffrey, said it I was minding my own business last time as speaker. Before this came out. Be Before this came, I was minding my own business. Then, then somebody sent me this recording, Mr. Speaker. By, uh, suggesting that it's not believable. Um, that, that's not, I have to believe. Listen, Mr. Rollins, now on Jeff Lloyd's show. Forthright and truthful in everything that he says, because if he's not, there's a price to be paid. Rollins had called on Minnis to speak directly to the matter and referring to Minnis's story that Bullard had come to drop off some fish to his home, Rollins said, I think it's comical and I'm not saying this to be disparaging, but I think it's comical when you are saying you're inviting somebody you don't know well to your home on the basis of them having fish to bring you. I don't understand why you go on the talk show talking with your leader like this, Ms. Speaker. Is it the man who... Who, who, when the other party was about to reject you, put your say, well, come, come to me. And this is the kind of things you get. You go on the talk show and you say that, and then you go into the newspapers and you say this, Mr. Speaker. That's what he's saying about his leader. Well, Rollins said he wasn't trying to embarrass his leader in any way. And although the governing side may be comfortable with covering for each other, he believes in being honest and forthright. I am in a catch-22 in the sense that if I'm asked a direct question by a member, if I am in a, if I'm asked, if I am asked a direct question, Mr. Speaker, by a member of the press, 
Is the other side suggesting that I offer a false answer? I have to be honest in my communications. And I said, I said that for what the other side claims is questionable activity, I thought that it was not a wise decision to entertain this individual that was uh, that both sides have claimed is a criminal. Gibson said he's not surprised by Rollins' comments concerning Menace, given he's already displayed a lack of respect for leadership. I'm not surprised though. See, so there's something called respect for leadership. Respect for leadership. They saw the way he spoke to the right on the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister was the one who went on the limb. When everybody else said, don't touch him, he had been an embarrassment to you. Right. Prime Minister said, no, I want Rollins. I see good potential in him. Yeah. Cause him to be here today. And then he called him every, you know, he concerned with what other people call the Prime Minister. He called him everything but a child of God, Mr. Speaker, right in this place. Right. I was shocked when the FNMC did welcome him in their bosom. Because actually after he displayed the kind of disrespect he did to our leader, there's no way possible another leader would say, send him to me. No, and you I don't touch him with a temper post, you leave him alone, don't touch him. A heated exchange erupted in Parliament last night over what the opposition leader should have done when he was reportedly told that his party's former chairman was being set up. Within a matter of minutes, the argument turned into menace elaborating on what was discussed in conversations between him and one of the alleged gang members, and him saying that he's willing to take a lie detector test. Kyle Joaquin reports. It's no doubt been a rough few days for the FNM. The party saw the resignation of its chairman, and now the party's leader is caught in a bit of controversy following him admitting that he met with one of the alleged gang members. And now last night in Parliament, Minnis said, as it relates to this matter, he's willing to take a lie detector test. If you are that concerned, if you are that concerned, Prime Minister, I'm prepared to take a lie detector test. Would you do it? Would you do it? Member. But laughing it off, Christie fired back saying he's not the one who needs to take a lie detector test and that Minnis could have avoided all this. It is not for me, Mr. Speaker, since he challenged it, it is not for me, Mr. Speaker, to subject myself to a lie detector test, Mr. Speaker, because I'm not one of those who's subject to any investigation, I think. I think. But no, you need to because when you were faced with your chairman being threatened to be set up, you ought to have called the police. Yes! yes. When I was faced with the realization that these allegations were made, I called the Minister of National Security and said to him, I would wish the police to be involved. Right. My immediate response was, let the police investigate. You allowed your chairman to go and be set up. I want, I want everybody to listen to me carefully. The Prime Minister said, and I quote, and I quote, the Prime Minister said, and I quote, you allowed your chairman to be set up. Are you admitting that my chairman no, was set up? No. According to Minnis, Livingston Bullard, also known as Togi, called him to tell him of former FNM chairman Michael Pintard being set up. Christie then reiterated that once Minnis was informed that his chairman was being set up and that something illegal might take place, he should have taken it to authorities. But here's what Minnis said he was told when given the warning that his chairman was in fact being set up. I was told that my chairman has a bright future. And what they also said, what he also said, was that my chairman is walk, going to a meeting where he would be set up and he don't, he don't think the chairman should be destroyed because he's a young man, a bright man with a great future. However, things got a bit deeper as Minnis explained how the chairman in this case didn't listen to his warning. I advise, I advise the chairman not to attend any meeting. Okay. And the chairman subsequently defied my advice. Pintard has since resigned as chairman of the FNM and as a member of the Senate. And as has been the case since the scandal arose, the deputy speaker found himself butting heads once again with MPs. Kindly take your Even seat. Even though it's Kindly referred to seat. here. Kindly this, take your this seat. Is, this is your chamber. Kindly take and your seat. Well, I'm asking you to take your seat. I am asking you to take your seat. We'll take your seat. Turn off his mic. He's not recognized. You're not recognized. Take your seat. The police investigation into this matter is said to be underway, and Minnesota said he has no problem with speaking to authorities. Reporting for NB12, 
Kyle Joaquin. After a bloody terrorist attack rocked Belgium's capital yesterday, a photo of the attacker went viral. And information on that photo revealed that Khalid El Bakrawi could possibly be a dual national of Belgium and the Bahamas. Today, Minister of Immigration and Foreign Affairs Fred Mitchell said upon initial investigation, the attacker's Belgium nationality is confirmed, but his connection to the Bahamas is not. He also said the government is looking into this matter to figure figure out how the Brussels bomber ended up being listed by Interpol as a Bahamian national. Simone Davis reports. This is the moment one bomb went off at 8 a.m. Caught on surveillance video, a flash, and everyone runs for cover. This incident occurred at the city's main airport and another at a downtown subway station, killing 31 people and leaving 270 injured. One of two brothers who were allegedly responsible for terrorist attacks in Brussels, Belgium, on Tuesday has been linked to the Bahamas. Belgium officials have identified 27-year-old Khalid El Bakrawi as the suicide bomber who targeted Milbeek subway station where 20 people died. His brother, 29-year-old Ibrahim El Bakrawi, has been accused of a suicide bombing at Zaventem Airport that killed 11 people. Two other attackers at the airport, one of whom whom died had not been identified as of this afternoon and the other was reportedly on the run. According to Interpol's website, Khalid El Bakrawi, who was born in Belgium, is listed as a Belgium and Bahamian national. Minister of National Security Dr. Bernard Nottage advised Parliament today that Interpol published a red notice on Khalid El Bakrawi, which confirmed his Belgium nationality, but the Bahamian nationality is not confirmed. Minister Mitchell further explained that the government currently has the Immigration Department and the Ministry of National Security investigating how this attacker could possibly be linked to the Bahamas. Well, the Minister of National Security simply announced that there is a what's called a red notice or red alert uh, from Interpol, which is the international police organization headquartered in Paris. And it says that the person, one of the persons they're looking for in connection with the bombings in Brussels, uh, lists his nationality in a, as a dual nationality with Belgian confirmed and Bahamian not confirmed. So we are doing the checks to find out whether this is in fact the case. Mitchell revealed that the Ministry of Tourism is also on board with the investigation. I've had inquiries from overseas missions. Uh, I'm told that by the tourism minister, the tourist offices are, are being uh, asked the question. So I'm asking uh, immigration to check to see and uh, for uh, the passport office to check to see and foreign affairs is checking with other mission with the Belgians to find out what is the basis upon which the assertion is being made. So that's all he was saying so that there be no misunderstanding about the fact that we are aware of it and uh, trying to check to see what the whether it's bona fide and true. Mitchell also explained the role his department plays in protecting the Bahamian borders and Bahamians in these types of incidents. I have always as foreign minister said indicated that in this era of soft targets, you always have to be concerned about security and I'm assured by the police that they are uh, equipped to deal with any such exigency. Uh, so, we're, you know, one is always on the alert and I think everybody has to be watchful uh, of, of the situation given what life is like in the, in, in the world today. Reporting for NB12, I'm Simone Davis. When MB12 returns, the Minister of Labor on new sick leave policy changes. Stay with us.